Hey guys, I just want to go over this last assignment of the year. I'm going to leave it right here. This is another art history assignment. It's a short reading packet. I'm talking about the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood from England. Now this would have been right before, uh, or I want to say it like this, that these guys really influenced what happened at the turn of the century. So this is the 1850s, so 50, 50 years uh, before, you know, the turn of the 20th century, you know, but uh, what's what's most important to, about these guys is that they they painted or they, they made their uh, works from real people in their lives around them, their friends, people they knew, they, they found models, uh, they'd go out and they'd sit in the countryside and paint and they were really into detail. Um, they didn't think that they should exclude anything. They, like nothing was idealized. They weren't saying trying to make find find the most beautiful woman or find the most beautiful thing in nature or make things up that they thought were more beautiful than real life. They thought real life was the most beautiful thing, and I can really get behind that uh, personally. Um, and I think you'd figure that out too, you know. But uh, here's the first page of the packet. It's just a a few words in, in the reading that I thought you might not know. Maybe you already know them. Um, if you come across words when you're reading stuff, take the time to look it up if you don't know what it means. And you can usually figure it out through context of, of the reading though. So uh, here are the main characters of, that are part of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. There are many others, but uh, these are the main ones. We're only going to look at these first four because it, I don't want you to be overburdened right now. And, it, you know, it's best to do things in chunks, I think. So we're going to look at these four. John Everett Millay, William Holman Hunt, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, and Lizzie Siddle, Elizabeth Siddle. This is just talking about why it's called the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. This is the toughest part, okay, because like, if you look at these two paintings in the pack, it's like, well, what's the difference? I don't really see a difference. They both use blue and red. It's, they're, they're both religious subject matter, but they, they would say that this painting was better because this type of painting but had been copied so much, and it idealizes things, and it uses a, it uses a lot of shadow, and like, I guess they felt like this had been done to death. If, so to speak. Um, and everybody would just take these paintings and copy them and then they would copy and, 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 and it be, it it'd become uh, uh, an echo chamber of meaninglessness to them. So they liked this better, the, the way this was uh, composed and they would draw with, with outlines and then kind of fill it in with flatter uh, areas of color. They like, they preferred this and many other ones. It, it, this is the hardest thing to put your finger on, but I don't have time to show in this packet like 50 different examples of this type of painting. Okay, but it was early Renaissance that they really liked, like maybe the 1450s, that time period of uh, painting in uh, in Italy. This is you have to read this. This explains it. I'm not going to read it because that that would be why why would I have it there? Okay, right. So I want you to read that. Here's an example of a painting by John Millay. I think it's the most important painting. He has so many beautiful paintings; it's unreal, and I can't even understand how he did it all. But he was considered to be like the best. He was like a child prodigy, and he continued to be great all his life. He had ups and downs, and. He uh, tried to do things that didn't go over too well, and then he'd have to go back and do things that people accepted more in order to make a living as a painter. He had a wife, um, and uh, his wife was actually formerly married to John Ruskin. It's, it's a big uh, interwoven tale of romance and, uh, and, and uh, things people thought that, like... Uh, was scandalous, you know what I mean? But uh, we were not getting into that here. Uh, William Holman Hunt, one painting by him. I don't really, I'm not really that crazy about this painting, although I, 
uh, found it when I was a young student in college and it, I thought it was interesting, but I didn't know anything about it then. Um, but this is full of symbolism and Holman Hunt was like a devout religious guy, but he had ups and downs in his life too where he succumbed to temptation, he did the wrong thing, and he, he, he went, actually went into a journey into the desert into the Holy Land to try to find his, like his soul again, and his, his, his belief in God, and, and try to prove to God that he was devout. Um, but he's trying to tell people in this painting about um, not uh, going off the path of, of righteousness, I think. Uh, but you can figure that, figure, interpret it for yourself, maybe read more about it and try to find out what he was getting at here. But there's a lot of symbols that I talk about. Um, and things happening in the painting, he's trying to show what not to do, it's more or less, in this painting. It's a beautiful painting. Uh, this is a painting by Dante Gab uh, Gabriel Rossetti. Um, his style is like very different from the others. Um, he has a looser style, it's more like a, a, a more romantic, or more, uh, he's more interested in the theme than he is about painting everything exactly. I feel like he didn't have the same kind of patience. He was also involved in drugs, and uh, he was very uh, driven by his emotions. He fell in love with a lot of women, and he wasn't necessarily uh, a, uh, a good husband. If you if you think staying uh, um, true to your wife is important, you know what I mean. Staying loyal to your wife is important. And he wouldn't be considered the best, in my opinion, in that in that regard. Uh, but he was he was a great guy. You should read his poetry; it's amazing. Um, and there's much more to know about him too. Um, he was considered kind of considered their leader because he had like the most charisma. <clears throat> this is about Lizzie Siddle, and she was actually a painter herself, but she's most famous for being a model. And she modeled for Millet's Ophelia, which was a super huge painting, super popular. And after people saw this painting, she became like a celebrity. And uh, she went on to pursue her own um, endeavors in, in making art, uh, thanks again to um, Ruskin, John Ruskin. But uh, she has a sad story, and her ending is very sad. And I kind of blame uh, Rossetti in part for his uh, philandering and uh, why she was so depressed. Uh, but I'd like you to watch this video, okay? And then I close it up here, and there's five questions I want you to answer. Okay, so take the time to explore. And this is the last thing I want you to do. You could do one question a day, you know, if you feel like it's too much for you. And I, mean, I think putting, you know, doing it that way wouldn't be bad because I'm a deep, Learner, I like to know everything, even though it's impossible. I try to seek out as much information about stuff as I can, because because they things start to overlap and all the puzzle pieces start to come together. The more you know, all right. So that's the packet on the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. It's a really interesting, and but it's really dense, so it can seem overwhelming. But let's just take a look at these four, uh, this this woman and these four men. Okay, from the 1850s, 1840s, 1850s in England, London, England is where they were. Okay, I can't wait to see uh, how you respond, and I hope you take it seriously. All right, talk to you later.